Hey, good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday evening, 630. Uh, we're doing this on our YouTube page, the WFF. I think you have to search WFF News and Weather for that. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to that as well. That way you get more updates. And one of the, the nice things, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, that some of the people are saying about the YouTube is that you actually get to watch it on your television. So if you have a smart television, you can just click over to the, the YouTube app. Of course, there's two different YouTubes. I've got the same thing. I've got the YouTube Live, which is the television service, and then you've got YouTube, which is your regular YouTube. So when you watch it, you get the convenience of watching it there, and you get other news stories of the day as well. But the reason uh, I've kind of came up with this idea was because we had a lot of people bringing weather radios in, and the biggest challenge is every weather radio is going to be a little different. Not all of them are programmable either. So you've got this one here. This is a new model that uh, Midland came out with. It, it's really cool. It's got um, the solar power here, so you can actually crank it up and charge your cell phone. It's got a crank. It's got a flashlight on it. The challenge is this one does not have SAME technology. This one you can't say, I only want Madison County, or I only want Lauderdale County, or I only want tornado warnings. This is going to give you all the counties, just like the old version weather radio. And the reason they came up with the newer weather radio was because people would turn them off because you'd get a lot of times, let's face it, when we get severe weather, we get a lot of rain too. So you get flash flooding events and you'll get this go off for everything, flash flooding, and then you turn it off and then there's more tornadoes coming in. And uh, that's, that's the problem. That's why they said we've got to do something. So they came up with what's called same technology. And what this is, and I'll show you how to program this, this is going to be important to where you live, what county you live in, and maybe the county next to you. But the thing about it is, is I really only like to do one county because the National Weather Service is really good about issuing in advance and these polygons. So let's say, for example, um, Colbert County has a tornado warning out for it, but the storm's going into Lawrence County. In that polygon, it will include Lawrence County, so it be, would be redundant to have Colbert in there because you'd get, a, you'd get a, a warning for a storm moving in uh, across the state line in from Mississippi. So that's one thing to consider if you don't want it going off all the time, which is why some people have upgraded. And we've got this really small one here. This is a really cool, this is called the Pocket Weather Alert Radio. You probably find these on Amazon. I don't know if I've seen these in local stores, but I think these are like $16 where these are like $35. But these are not programmable. The only thing you can program is the channel. This is good if you're out camping, you're out on the boat, you just want to know more about the weather. So how many people we got on? Let's see if we can just go ahead and get into it. About 70? Okay. So we're going to get in here. We're going to program this weather radio. And what you're going to look for, if you're looking for one of these, is it's going to say WR, this one says WR120B. Now when they originally came out, this 120 model was the older version as well. But the way, the way you really know whether you can program the tornado, just tornado warning or severe thunderstorm warnings only, is going to be, you look on the back. So I, I just bought this at Lowe's two days ago. They had two left. I got one, so I don't know if they have any left now. And that's the thing, going up to Christmas, it was hard to find these weather radios. So what you'll see is on the very back, it'll say Midland here. And again, this is specifically uh, for programming this Midland 120 EZ radio. So it'll say EZ at the end of it. So the first thing you want to do is put your batteries in. It takes three AA batteries. So we put these in here. And just a reminder, this is just a battery backup. Say you get the power goes out and it often happens. So what happens is, is some people, they don't plug it in. You've got to plug it in. It comes with a, a power pack transformer here. And what that's going to do is, of course, you can leave it plugged in all the time. And you leave it on all the time, too. Boy, this one's got smaller and smaller. They used to be big and bulky. So again, here's your, your transformer. And what they've done here is they've upgraded these, too, because it used to fit in the antenna as well. So we had people plug them into the wrong hole. So the first thing you're going to see here, it's going to say set language. And of course, that one's, that one's kind of easy for most of us. Again, it'll have Spanish, French. We'll see. So set language. So that's the first thing you're going to see. So then you hit the select, 
and English is the first one. And of course, you can go down and does France, Spanish, so it does French, Spanish, and English. So we're going to want English. So then you hit select for that. And then it's automatically going to say set location. So then you hit select again. And if it's going to default to what says any, any location. That is going to get any location on these transmitters. So when I talk transmitters, that's the next thing you're going to want to know is the transmitter. Here's the Florence transmitter. And the thing about the transmitter is it is only going to warn in these counties here. So if you're in Huntsville, number one, you're not going to be able to hear the weather radio, the voice of the National Weather Service from this transmitter. And this is 162.475 megahertz. And I've also had the question about can I get the like Itawamba County and Tishomingo County, it's not going to help because they won't be triggered on the Huntsville National Weather Service. At least they haven't in the past, unless they've changed that recently, because that comes from the Memphis National Weather Service office. So again, back to here, the channel, you, you want to go down. We're going to program this just for severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings. So we're going to go down here and hit select. Whoop, I got to go back. See, it's been a while since I programmed. Okay. Let me get back in here. Okay, now it says setup done. So you may do this yourself as well. So we go back in here, set time. That's the, the least thing you have to worry about is setting the time because if the time isn't right, it doesn't matter. Uh, it basically, you toggle through here, set alarm, set language. We've already done that. So set location, we're back here. So that's how you kind of hit menu and then you toggle through this little joystick here, this little, uh, these up and down arrows. So we're going to set the location. It's on any, but we want it to be single. There's also multiple, which is where you add more than one county. And I'll go through that uh, for those that have that question. And by the way, this is the antenna. So if you have it in your house and you can't hear it, uh, you can't hear the voice of the weather radio, uh, weather service, and then you'll want to extend that. So we've got it on single, and I'm going to hit select. And it's going to start 0, 1, empty. So let's say I live in Flor I, I live in Moulton, all right? So you're going to go through here and hit select. And that's going to say USA, because you can actually program this for Canada, too. You could program one of these. Say you have uh, your kids live in California, or your kids live in Kansas. You could program it for their location, too, and send it to them. So it's going to say Alabama. And then it's alphabetical. So it's going to go Otago County. So we want, let's say we want Lawrence County. So we're going to go through here. And see, this eliminates you having to know that SAME code. Where the SAME code comes in is an older uh, weather, weather radio. So let's get here into, I just kind of put the, I probably should have done Colbert County. I wouldn't have had to go far, as far down. But we're going to go Lawrence County. So I hit select. And now we're on Lawrence County. So um, we're done there. So we hit the menu. And we go back to set location. We're going to arrow down. And we do alert type. Voice. That's where the voice will automatically start uh, talking. It will tell you that. you got voice. Display. You don't want display. Because display just shows what the warning is. And it won't really alert you as well. And then tone. Tone's a good one. Of course, it's going to say beep, 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 beep. So tone or voice pretty much work on these. Let me. Yeah, voice is probably the best one because it'll tone and then it will start talking. So we'll do this one for voice. And we hit select. And then we get back to menu. So it's saved. So that's the first part. Now you want to go in and say, let's see if we got any questions right now. No questions so far. OK. So once we've got the county in there, and I'm going to kind of show you other things here. The other uh, transmitter is going to be the Huntsville transmitter, and that is 162.40 megahertz. And we'll do that here in a second. So we're going in here. We go back to menu. Set alarm, set language, set location, alert type, alert test. Now it says set channel. This is going to be 162.475. I believe that's going to be for Colbert County. But we, uh, we would want Huntsville. So that's what it's going to sound like. 
So when you hit this weather snooze button, you should hear the voice of the weather service. It's, it's a robotic voice, by the way. So we've got that, and it, it goes through, and it, if there's storms in the area, you can just push that button, and it'll kind of give you information about it. So we've set the channel. Now, we do, now it's where it says set events. So on set events, if you just want tornado warnings, you're going to go, or if you want just severe thunderstorm, we're going to set this up for severe thunderstorm warning and tornado warnings only. So what you'll do here is you'll hit select, and it'll say all default. That's how it comes pre-programmed. So if you scroll down, it says all off. So we're going to turn them all off. So then we go back into set events. You get back to that menu. And then we're going to scroll down. And we're going to do edit events. I'm going to take a sip of water, see if anybody's got any questions. One question is, can I set for Madison and Morgan County, which I think you've been going over. Yes, you can do. We'll do mul multiple here in a second. That's where you go in and set location. There's going to be sing it's going to be all single or multiple, and that's where you'd go in. And zero one would be Madison. Zero two would be Morgan counties. They're both on the same transmitter, so you can do that. So as we get here to edit events, see that? I don't know. Yeah, there we go. So then you hit select, and you're going to have a lot of this administrative message. So basically, I scroll all the way back. Well, actually, whichever way is fastest to get to severe thunderstorm warning. And it's in the T's. So I actually pushed down. So you're going to have one that says severe weather statement, severe thunderstorm warning. And the warning light will light up red. The watch will be kind of an amber color. So here's where it says severe thunderstorm warning. Hit select. And it's set to off because we turned all of them off. So then you arrow it to on and hit select. And then menu, menu, and back out, saving, you're done. So that's it. This weather radio is programmed for just severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings only. You, now, if you go in there and you're trying to figure out why, don't, why you don't see tornado warning, is because by default you cannot remove the tornado warning from it so they just didn't put it in the menu. So you'll have an option whether you want a severe thunderstorm watch, tornado watch, or you could do severe thunderstorm warning. If you live in a flood prone area, you're probably going to want flooding in there. But I mean, if you don't go in and, and uh, do these messages, well, then the whole purpose of buying this specific weather radio is kind of out the window because you're going to get the old style. You're going to get all the warnings. And for some of you, that's fine. You want, you want all the information and you can get. So if we want to do multiple counties, we'll go back here to menu. Again, it's got 12.09 on the, on the clock. And we're not going to focus on setting the clock. And by the way, if the batteries, like if this, we lose power, it goes blank, it stays programmed. The only thing that changes is the clock. So I'll put these back in here, and then we'll do multiple counties. All right, so we get it back up, and now we're going to do menu, set time. You, you, again, you're arrowing down. This is like a joystick. You're going either way. It says set alarm. I guess if you want to set, select here, alarm is off. This is like if you want to set like a regular alarm for 6 o'clock in the morning. And we've had a, people come in and say, my radio keeps going off at 6.15 in the morning, and they've set the alarm. So... Language again, set location. Here's where we go in. Hit. It's on single because we only wanted Lawrence County. So we come down and we're going to do multiple. And then you hit select. And the one we've already put in is Lawrence County. And with these new radios, if you arrow down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to find one, or arrow up, I guess. Sometimes it'll find one that is close to your location. But in this situation, it didn't. <laughs> We're back to the top of the alphabet. Let's put in Colbert County. So you arrow down to Colbert County. There's Colbert. So hit select 
and then it'll go to the next one if you want three, if you want four, if, no matter how many you want to add. But I'm just going to hit menu and get out. So it's saving it, and now we're back. Again, all you have to do is push this weather snooze to get it. And this is the volume up, up and down. And this is where I get my forecast every day. No, I'm just kidding. And that's it. Um, if you have, why don't you show me your big green machine over there? Yeah, sure. I don't know, some of you are like, I don't have that weather radio. We did have a question. Someone has a small Redland, Red Midland radio. This one right here, probably? Exactly, yeah, probably. What you yeah, this about. one is pretty much the same as this one. It's, it's smaller, made by a different company. But what your, these are both weather alert radios, but this one, all you have to do is go in and set the channel. And this one's on weather band 162.400. And you can go in here and you can change the channel. This is also a radio as well, which is different, which is nice to have when you have severe weather. You lose your power if, if you need to tune into one of our radio partners. So then you'll go in and you'll just change to the uh, transmitter that's in your area, but you're going to get every every one that they have. I guess you want to show that full screen. We'll go through these uh, uh, this is the Florence transmitter. Again, for uh, those of you that have these other model radios that you can't go in and uh, do this, S it, it, most of them will say S-A-M-E, and that stands for basically counties. So that's the Huntsville, the Florence transmitter. It's 162.475, and you may say, well, I don't have that. All I have is channel 1 through 7. I believe channel one is 162.400 you're just going to have to kind of experiment on the channel and to see when you push the weather snooze or the alert button to see whether or not it turns on but this is for like the older 120 midland 120 white radio and some of you speaking of that one i'm going to fast forward here to the huntsville transmitter again what i've got in blue this is mainly the coverage area and you notice how it kind of bleeds over into Jackson County, but you get into the higher terrain, the radio waves don't quite um, pass the same way. It's kind of like our TV transmitter. Sometimes in the past, we didn't get good signal into the northeast corner of the state. Uh, but speaking of which, if you push your weather snooze and all you hear is a beep, that means your speaker's dead. That means you need to buy a new weather radio. And if you take the, the batteries off the back, if they go dead in there, they will corrode and they will ruin your radio. And I've seen that happen a lot too. So let me go back through some of these other transmitters. Again, there's at least there's four of them here covering North Alabama. This one's Huntsville. Okay, this is typically channel one. Here's the ARAB transmitter. And a lot of people <clears throat> may be on the Huntsville transmitter over there in northern Marshall County. But if, if you go to the ARAB transmitter, you may actually get better reception. So that's what you're really trying to do when you have one of those. You're just trying to find the best reception you can get. Uh, the key is this transmitter does send out the warnings uh, to all those areas in northeast Alabama. So this covers Joppa, ARAB, Douglas, Albertville, Boaz, and even down into Blunt County and over towards Gadsden. Uh, the Henniger transmitter, also known as the Fort Payne transmitter, but it is located closer to Henniger. Uh, this is kind of that area that's going to cover more of northeast, the deeper you get into Jackson County and DeKalb County and down there towards Weiss Lake. So if you go down boating at Weiss Lake, here's another question I get is uh, people like, well, can I take this from one spot to the next? And the challenge is, let's say you're traveling. Uh, you're on vacation, maybe going to the beach, if, or you have, maybe you're fortunate enough you have a lake house, a beach house. You can't take the same rate. You can, but you have to reprogram it to where you're going because it's going to most likely be on a different transmitter channel, which is where this little guy here comes in really handy because if you're already awake, if you're out boating, camping, this is going, it's going to trigger every warning and every county that's in that warning but, like if this is on the Huntsville transmitter, you're going to get the warnings for Limestone, Giles, Morgan, Marshall, Coleman, all into northeast Alabama. But you're going to want that if you're out camping, right? That's what tells you to tune in and watch our broadcast. And that's the most important thing about weather radio is, again, especially with some of these communities doing away with 
their outdoor warning sirens, that eliminates one of those ways uh, to get the warning information. And it's not so much you can't, you can barely hear the sirens, it's an acknowledgement that there's a warning. And that's one of the things the social scientists tell us is that if you just get one, if, if it's just me on TV saying you need to seek shelter, that may not be enough. Usually there's a, a follow-up phone call from a relative that says, I just saw so-and-so, uh, you need to be seeking shelter now. It's that secondary signal that triggers you to take action. And this, is, this can be that secondary signal. Or you hear this, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you tune into the broadcast, and that's your second signal. You're like, okay. So eliminating the outdoor warning sirens, especially for people outdoors, that becomes problematic because how many times do you see a whole group of people on their phones, if they're all getting the same message, they may not be reacting the same way uniformly and getting out. So th th those are some concerns I have with that. But again, those are not, that's not my call. How about some other questions? Yeah, that's that. That's going to be on the uh, ARAB transmitter. And again, these can fail. I mean, speaking of ARAB and the transmitter, the Huntsville transmitter that was sending out, I think it was 1995, very early in the morning, uh, the transmitter in Huntsville for Noah Weather Radio was struck by lightning. So that warning didn't get sent out. But again, backup, backup, backup. Your phone should be like third on the list because I can't tell you how many times like an app will fail, it won't send it out. Uh, the other thing to consider is, you know, going back, I hate to bring up April 27th, but days like that may happen down the road. You just never know. And that's when the power grid was really stressed. So we had weather radios off. We had radio stations off, TV stations off the air. You had a number of things going wrong. And what, from that event, what I've really kind of, when I've talked to my friends at the weather service, I said, I really think what would help is if you have an actual human being on the weather radio in times of those big emergencies. And I, I think that's probably in the plans. Uh, God forbid we have another big problem like that. I mean, it, it could be a hazmat spill. It could be anything. That's what this is. It's an all hazards radio. If it says, I mean, we had it go off for, I think there was a boiling water uh, alert that went out a couple years ago. I forget which county it was. So again, all right, how many uh, people are still on? Well, you're looking at about 900 total. Okay. And we are, we are going to save this, and I'm going to look at having it reposted somewhere. You do have one question here, how to delete or change priority of locations. How to the what now? How to, how to delete or change priority of locations. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's see if I can delete that. Uh, they're not, pri by the way, the one through six or whatever, how many you put in there, it's not a priority. I know some of you, the, the algorithms, it's not a priority, it's just a choice. So we go in here. Set location. Multiple. I think you have to go in. And let's see, let's select that. I th you know, I think they told me how to do it, and it was basically you had to just reset the whole thing. But I think what I would do is I would go in and say, set it for the U.S. Virgin Islands, someplace that you're not going to get an alert for, because uh, Huntsville won't send out anything for them. So that's what I would do. St. Croix, let's go. So, But unless, I don't think I can actually put one in twice. Now this is where the older model actually is nice because you could just go in and manually do it. Let me see if I can manually do that. Manually override. Let me see if I can just put Lawrence County in there twice. That may work too. But I would put somewhere that's not anywhere near here. Yeah, it won't let me do Lawrence because it's already in there. That's a good question, though. I may have to work on that because I think there was a way you could reset it. Oh, and by the way, this on-off switch here, this just mutes the radio, and a lot of people think, you know, they put batteries in it. 
and they're just going to turn it off. It doesn't. It's still using the battery. So it's kind of, the problem is you turn it off, you're not going to get your, your alerts. So the best advice I can give you short term, I'll, I'll find the answer, would be to uh, put in a place that, that Huntsville won't send a warning to, and that would be St. Croix. And then when you take your weather to St. Croix, you'll get your weather. Well, it'll be on a different transmitter there too. Let me see if I've got any quick questions here on my uh, Facebook page. I mean, the thing about social media is, are we getting questions on the YouTube as well? We've gotten a couple. Uh, the one with the ARAB question, the okay. ARAB question you had, you had that covered there. And I think you've answered most of it. We have pretty much questions answered on Facebook as well. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up then. I appreciate your time. I know we kind of, we talked about this for several days. I really wanted to do this because I think it's really important because I get asked so many times, is it safe for me to go to bed? And honestly, I'm in a situation where I'm like, yeah, sure, I'd go to bed. But I can't tell you that uh, for liability reasons, of course. But there's always that potential there's going to be something come up. That's why you need a weather radio to wake you up in the middle of the night. It is loud. In fact, let me see if I can test this one here. And while you're going through that, someone did ask, what is the broadcast channel for Coleman? Broadcast channel for Coleman. Uh, as far as the megahertz, there's the Coleman transmitter right there. That is 162.450, and this works down at Smith Lake. So that's, that's, again, as we get into the summer months, you may want to have that severe thunderstorm warning in there to trigger you because a lightning storm or even some of these severe thunderstorms can get really nasty in the summertime. It depends on your situation. If you're going to be out, out and about, uh, again, if you're like a camp counselor, scout leader, something like that, a portable weather radio is the way to go. Those, those can be a little bit more difficult to program. I've got these two at home that look like handheld radios, but I mean, I've got a bag of manuals here. I mean, we used to go out and do this a lot. So again, very informative. Before you wrap up, okay. kind of where people can go find these. Oh yeah, yeah, you, you can, can find them. these. I've spoke to the rep at uh, Midland Radio out of Kansas City, and they have another big shipment that's basically bidding, getting put to the masses out there. Uh, Ace Hardware, you'll find them. And you're looking to buy one of these at about $30 to $39. So uh, Lowe's, uh, I got one there. I think I paid $35 for this one here. Um, Publix, I've seen them at Publix. I've seen them at Kroger, Walmart. I think Home Depot may even sell them. But th the thing you may want to do is just go to their online sites and see if they have one. That's what I did. I was getting ready because we were coming up on this event, and I think it was Monday, and I was, I was telling Chelsea, I said, man, I don't have a, the right radio to program. And I was sweating it out because I was like, man, they're in high demand, so it's hard to find them. And I was just going to go to Amazon and have one overnighted so I'd have it. And then when I went to the location on Amazon, it said it was available at Lowe's. So then I looked at the Huntsville Lowe's location, and sure enough, they had two of them. So I went ahead and bought it online and went to the store. And that's another thing, pretty smart thing to do, is go ahead and buy it maybe online if you're going to go to the store and pick it up. That way, you're kind of reserving it, because sometimes uh, there gets a rush on weather radios, and uh, you may get to the store, and it's like, well, you said you had it, but then you get there, and it's gone because somebody has bought it, because there were only two left. There's only one now. And uh, so Amazon's probably a pretty good place to, to look if you can't find them anywhere. Academy Sports, by the way, uh, we used to partner with it. Walgreens has had them. We've partnered with them in the past as well. Uh, again, the price point you're looking for is $30 to $40. And then they've got a silver, uh, more of a silver kind of, some of you may have a silver weather radio. I had one of those, a Midland. It's a little bit harder to program. But these new ones are really, they've made them really easy to program. You just basically go step by step and to go through there and it shows you the county. It gets a little tedious beeping through and, and going through all the counties where we used to program them really fast. Those older ones, it's just because we knew, knew all the numbers, but we couldn't take out flash flood warnings. So that, that's that been the biggest um, request, I think, is can I take this out? So again, weather radios, are gonna they'll be scarce after. Let's say we have an outbreak of severe weather the next day there's a big run it, it's 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 so typical you know it's like 
oh, I better go get a weather radio. Then four or five days pass. Oh, I don't need one. And it's like, the event comes. We used to have lines form outside the station uh, the day before severe weather events, people wanting their weather radio program. So this has made it much easier, and hopefully I've been able to kind of talk you through some of this as well. And just hand it to your grandson. They can probably figure it out, or granddaughter. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. You all have a great evening. It uh, looks like uh, we've got rain on the way for St. Patrick's Day, and the weather pattern changes around late this month, and then we get into April. And if you're new to the area, April is our big tornado month, so we'll be keeping an eye on it. Appreciate your time.